Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I'm taking a look at another tool that I use as I uh, show as opposed to tell when I'm teaching and, and sharing and communicating online. In earlier videos, I talked about screen captures or taking an image from your screen and annotating it and sharing it to sort of give a glimpse onto what your computer screen looks like so that you can use it to demonstrate or communicate or teach to others. I also do a lot of screen casting, uh, so I'll have a video such as the video that you're watching right now, taking a look at how to make things or how to communicate from my screen and, and show others, show colleagues, show students um, what's out there. I also have been experimenting lately with um, the use of animated GIFs or GIFs, depending on what side of the street you grew up on, but these little animated elements um, for teaching and learning. So uh, a, a GIF or a GIF is just a little form of an image format, but what they figured out, what we figured out how to do is you can animate these. Um, so what ends up happening is you have a series of these that they stitch together um, and they turn into a little animation. Um, and all that's happening here is you have a set of individual images that if you sort of stitch them together, they look, they, it, as they're animated, they look like there's movement happening. Um, and so, I mean, you have some funny ones that are out there, some, some interesting or cool ones that are out there. Um, and so what I've been thinking about is how could we use these for instruction? Um, and what I'm thinking about is that if I have a screen capture, if I have a static image that I mark up and annotate, the, the static image will only say so much. There's certain times that I want to have um, a static image uh, in my communication. There's also certain times that I want to have text or a sentence. Um, there's certain times that an image will do better than text or a sentence. Um, and there's also certain times that a video, a full-blown video, will, will work much better for instruction. Um, but for me, there's a middle ground between a static image in a video. Sometimes I don't want the full video because I don't want the the reader or the viewer or the learner to have to push play. Um, and so what I've been experimenting with is instructional GIFs or animated GIFs um, to use in my content. An example of what this looks like is this is a, a blog post that I put out. Um, and this is for my readers. This is also for uh, students of mine looking at using Creative Commons images in their in their you know content and so I have a lot of text here where I write out on a very granular level um, you know how to use content how to find images on Flickr and as I've shown in the past I'll put together you know a, a screen capture an image that basically I mark up and I annotate I add some text I add an arrow um, and the main idea is just to show my students or the reader you know enter your search term here like exactly here if there is any ambiguity at all okay um and so that's you know that's a screen capture what i also use is screen casts so i'll do a video of this whole process and share the video with others um, in case they don't want to read through the text or they don't want to you know view the images some people prefer that um but then like i said there's a middle ground i think there's a middle ground between these screen captures or the static images and the screencast, the full-blown video. And, and what I see is the opportunity to create an animated GIF or GIF. Um, and so if you look at this, what I end up creating is, to me, the, 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 the animated GIF is a like a one-two step. It's like an in-between, a static image and a video. Um, here's another example up here. And all I'm doing in this image is... And this is still an image. A GIF or a GIF is basically a, a, it's a series of images that are stitched together to look like it's animated. And so all I'm doing is I, I typed in the word Apple and I'm clicking enter search tools usage rights. So it's like a one two step. So it's as if you had like that static image, but you wanted to add like an extra one or two beats to your instruction. Um, and so that's where I'm viewing the opportunity to bring in animated GIFs um, into it and use those for instructional purposes. Um, and the cool thing is it's relatively, actually it's really easy to do. Um, so one of the tools that I use a lot is Record It. 
this is a free tool. It's open source. Um, this works really well on Mac and, and Windows. Um, and so that, you know, pretty simple. I can hit download for Mac. It will download, install. I installed it before, but I basically just wanted to reinstall it to show you exactly what happens in this process. So I have it installed right now and it's up in my Mac dock. And so what I can do is I can click the little button on the dock and hopefully you can see some of that. I have record, preferences, quit. If I go to preferences, I can, um, you know, I can launch this on login. I can highlight the mouse if I want to, how many frames per second. Um, I don't really change any of this stuff here. Uh, I don't really... Uh, I don't have a license key for this and I don't password protect my content. I don't really have any need to. Um, so I don't really change any of the preferences here. I just go with what's out of the box. And so the, the cool thing with this is, let's say you're in, you know, my, my favorite per, uh, my, my favorite use of instruction is how to get around Google Drive. Um, so let's say you're in Google Drive and you're trying to share with people um, how to get in and go find that um, you know, that dreaded Google Forms. So one of the things is if I were writing out textual directions on how to get to Google Forms, I would say, okay, a sentence, you know, click on the blue button that says now, new, and then sl scroll down and a new sentence, go, you know, and, and at some point I'm losing people uh, or I'm getting so granular that people are turning out, turning off. Um, if I have a video, it's a little bit easier. If I have images, I'm going to have, you know, six or seven images to get to this point. So instead, what I can do is I can set up the, the animated GIF. So I can say record. And what it will do is just like a screen capture, it'll ask for an area to record. And as soon as I basically select that square, it's going to start recording. A couple different things to think about. One uh, as I said before with the screen captures and the screen casts, we want to aim small, miss small. So we want the content on our screen to be zoomed in and we want to keep our movements very simple and basic. The other thing is um, it's going to basically look for content that's 20 seconds or less. So you're really trying to be um, super precise and granular in terms of what you're uh, doing with this GIF. So if I collect, if I click and drag and let go, I'm going to say about here. Now it says if you're ready to record, go ahead and click it. So I'll click it, it's recording, I can hit new, go down to, I didn't make it big enough, so let's say I go to Google Docs and click. And so now what I can do is hit stop. And now I totally messed up that GIF, but this is great because it'll give us an opportunity to see what this thing looks like. Um, and it's a good rule of thumb while this thing is processing. Um, we're talking about aiming small, missing small. We're also thinking about keeping it short. Um, but one of the other things to learn in this process is that um, you learn by doing. Uh, you learn how to do screen captures and screencasts and these animated GIFs by doing. You're not really wasting anything other than time creating this. You're not paying for any of this content. This is all digital content. If I make this animated GIF or GIF here, if I create this thing and then delete it, it's not a big deal. I can, I, I right away I learned what to do and what not to do. So if I hit go, or if I hit that GIF button, what I'll do is I'll get a link to recorded.com, recorded.co, and what they're going to do is generate out and process that content for me. So I can see, here's the movements that I've made. Okay, so here is my content. If I grab this link and I share it out in an email. So let's say you have a student or a colleague that's trying to figure out how to do something. This is like a very quick, simple, you know, almost video that you can share them. And it's very lightweight. Um, what you can also do is, if I click on the graphic, I can record something new. Um, if I wanted to, so all I did was reopen this um, 
from the icon. So if I go to the icon and I click on the link that they give me in the icon, they'll list all of my uh, GIFs that I've created over time. So I can see this, I can share it out, but I can also download this thing as a GIF file. So I can save image as, and then I can save it to my desktop. And now what I have is a GIF file on my desktop. So if I show where this thing is located, I can see on my desktop I have this set up. If I look at the file itself, so here is my GIF. This is a file. I can upload this to my website. I can upload this to a blog, to a learning management system. Um, I can embed this in an email. Um, but now I have this GIF file there. If I look at this taken apart in a tool like preview what you'll see is a series of images that they've stacked together to create this so this is the gif file um, and it's basically you know a series of images that they've stitched together so you can see all of the individual files that they've had set up here okay and once they put all these together it becomes in essence an animation um, so once again, I'm thinking about how I can use animated GIFs for instructional purposes. I think there is a middle ground between uh, static images and uh, video. Uh, the animated GIF might be that opportunity. I think there's other opportunities out there, but I think this is a really great opportunity for us to think about how we might you know, continue to show as opposed to tell. Um, and once again, there's a lot of opportunities for it. You know, if I'm here in Google Drive, I can go to record. I can, you know, select this box up here. I've done videos in the past showing students how to get to the notifications in Google Plus and Drive. I can say, okay, I'm ready to record. Now I'm recording. I can go up and hit click and show them how to get to the settings. You know, I can do pretty much whatever I want. Hit stop. And now it's going to process or render out that GIF for me to show um, and then I can take that I can send an individual link to students I can use the link as a hyperlink in my writings I can uh, upload that file that GIF file to my website to a blog post um, put it on a wiki put it in a learning management system put it in an email and people can see the content so once again what we're looking at is this is for me like a middle ground between um, that's the wrong one I did. This is a middle ground between the screen capture and the screencast, almost like a one two step for the content. Um, so hopefully it helps you out. Hopefully it's meaningful to you. Um, this is one of the things that I've been working on um, for a while now, trying to figure out better ways to uh, show as opposed to just tell in my content. All of this content in then some is up on my blog. So if you go to wioburn.com, you can see a lot of my materials there. I put a couple more posts up this morning. I'm starting to integrate more uh, content about productivity and goal seeking behaviors and stuff like that um, to try and find some balance between uh, teaching and learning and the technology that we're talking about. And by all means, if you have not already, please subscribe to my newsletter, uh, Too Long Didn't Read, so you can subscribe online. It's free, and I basically talk about uh, the news of the week in, in education, technology, literacy, and things that I think you should be reading and paying attention to, um, because the goal is to make you the expert. Um, so once again, thanks for paying attention. Uh, hopefully, so hopefully this was meaningful to you, and have a good day.